Good morning. Let's see if this is going. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> good morning and happy Monday. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back, friends. We are live on Monday morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back, welcome back. I'm gonna grab my board over here. I had to reconfigure uh, school. My, uh, my downstairs where I've been teaching from is all over the place because we had something break in our house that's getting fixed. So things will be a little different today, but that's okay. It is Magical Monday. Look at that, April 13th, 2020. We are on day 20 of remote learning. Can you believe it? Wow, we've been doing so much together, lots of learning. Um, those of you that are just tuning in now, drop me a comment, say good morning. <clears throat> also, um, if you didn't see the, um, the new schedule I posted, um, we're trying to make it a little bit easier for everybody. And um, I know it's hard to get the live streams all the time, so, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be the live stream at 9 a.m. It's going to be one live stream. If you want to break it into two parts, that's fine. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, we're going to be doing all of our additional things like our Raz and Brain Pop and everything else. So make sure you take a look at that schedule. <clears throat> if you have any questions, reach out to me. All the information is on our Google website. Good morning. Hi, Ms. Adonisio. Hi, Ms. Wachter. Hi, Brian. Hi, Iago. How is everybody on this Monday morning? I'm happy to see you. I'm just talking about the new schedule. Make sure you check it out. Um, hopefully that'll give me some more time to do more pre-recorded, like the read alouds and stuff. So um, our routine's gonna be slightly different today. Not much, just a little bit different. Good morning, Christian. Let me see who else is here. My setup's different today because we are under construction. So yesterday, Easter, um actually the night before something went wrong with our electrical and our water heater and yeah so we have holes in our ceiling and had to get a new water heater and all kinds of crazy stuff was going on here yesterday so my uh, my classroom is a little rearranged so we're gonna bear with it for today so i hope everybody is doing well and they had a nice um nice weekend with their family I really had, uh, we had a nice Easter. We celebrate Easter in our house. And um, Juliana, my daughter, most of you know her, loves to cook. She was actually in like the MasterChef competition at our middle school this year. And uh, her team did really well. Um, and she loves to try to cook and try new things and try recipes. And she likes to do it by herself. Sometimes she'll check in and ask questions. But yesterday she wanted to make us dinner. So she did. She actually made um, her very first chicken pot pie and she did a really good job. There were lots of steps and a lot of ingredients and a lot of chopping things up and it was so delicious. There were no leftovers. Everybody ate it and wanted more. So I'm really proud of her. I love that she's been trying to be a helper in home and cooking more and because she loves doing it too. So that was how our Easter was. I hope you had a nice weekend. Feel free to leave me a message and let me know about your weekend. I would love to hear about it. I saw some of your awesome pictures and the fun things that you did. I did. I saw Christian planting flowers. I saw our friends on Easter egg hunts in their yards. I hope you were making great family memories together. It's so special. <clears throat> so before we get going today, let's do a little check-in. Let's breathe and uh, we can check in with how we're feeling. Are you ready? All right, so we're gonna do our three breaths in our nose, out our nose, let's roll. And you wanna do a lion's breath in your nose, out your mouth, okay. <sighs> awesome, good morning. Hi Hunter, hi Sadie. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> okay, so did anybody figure out the riddle from, from last week? It was a little tricky from Thursday. It was kind of silly. It was how far can a fox run into the woods? 
how far can it run into the woods? It can only run in halfway because it, on the other half, it'd be running out of the woods. Halfway. We can run halfway into the woods. That was kind of silly. Did anybody get that one? I have a good, a really good riddle for today. Are you ready for today's riddle? <clears throat> I think you're going to really like this. I know that Teresa's really going to like this one. How do mermaids keep in touch with each other? How do mermaids keep in touch with each other? Can't wait to hear your answers to that one. How mermaids keep in touch. Awesome. Awesome. So I have a new nursery rhyme for us. We've done so many so far, and this is actually one that I loved as a little girl. And I actually repeated and taught my kids because um, I liked it so much. It's called Starlight, Star Bright. I hope it's one that, that might be new to you. I love when you learn new nursery rhymes. Are you ready? So I'm gonna read it once through and then we'll practice. Okay, we'll practice learning it. So this is the nursery rhyme. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. And I remember being a little girl and looking up at the sky and saying this once I learned it. Are you ready? All right. So my turn, your turn. Starlight, star bright. The first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. Did you get it? Good. All right, so let's say it one more time through and then we're gonna move on to some other activities. Are you ready? And if you can remember some of it, say it with me. Are you ready to go? Let's do it. Starlight, star bright, the first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. That's a nice one. Okay, so that was our, that's our nursery rhyme for the week. And there's a lot, oh, it's one of your favorites. Me too. Yeah, I'm so happy that you know that one, Teresa and Killian. Uh, I want to work on rhyming. So we've done some rhyming <clears throat> where I showed you pictures. This one, you're just going to listen because we talked about phonemic awareness being listening and playing with sounds and rhymes and words, and it helps us to grow our strong reading brains, okay? It's really, really good for your brain, and it's really fun. So what's going to happen is I am going to say <clears throat> a word that we need to rhyme to, and then I'm going to give you two other words, and out of those two other words, you're going to pick the word that rhymes. Hi, Miss Long, good morning. All right, so we'll start with something easy peasy, cat. So you need to find the word that rhymes with cat. Mat or mop? Mat or mop, and say it out loud. Yes, mat rhymes with cat. Mat, cat, both say at, good. All right, let's try this one. So the word we need to rhyme to, rhyme with is sell. Can you say sell? Sell. All right, here's your two options. Rip or well. Rip or well rhymes with sell. Did you say well? Awesome. Good job. The next word we need to rhyme to is bit. Say bit. Good. All right. Which one rhymes? Hit or can? Hit or can? Yes. Hit, bit. Very good. The next word we need to rhyme to is hop. Everyone say hop. Hop. Good job. Which of these two rhymes with hop? Set or top? Set or top rhymes with hop. Did you say top? Awesome. Hi, Amy. All right. Next two. Oh, I didn't tell you the word first. The, the word that we're rhyming to is cup. Everyone say it. Cup. Cup. Good. Which of these two words rhymes with it? Pup or mad? Pup or mad rhymes with cup. Did you say pup? Awesome. All right. Next one. Did. Say it. Did. All right. Now here's your two options. What rhymes with did? Hid or got? 
hid, got. Which one rhymes with did? Did you say hid? Good job rhyming. Kiss those smarty pants brains. Awesome, awesome. All right, the next we're gonna do is we're gonna match our ending sounds. So remember how we used our arms? We like using our bodies. So put your hand on your shoulder, say beginning, beginning, middle, middle, and end at your wrist. So beginning, middle, end. Say it with me. Beginning, middle, end. Good. So we've been really good at matching our beginning sounds. You guys have been working really hard at that. Now we've been also, now we're, today we're going to do just ending sounds. It's a little trickier. So remember, we're not matching the first sound. We're matching the last sound. I'm going to say two words. You're going to repeat the two words. And then we're going to say the sound that we hear at the end, not the letter, the sound. You got it. All right, my superstar smart friends. First two words, look like, you repeat them, look like, what do you hear at the end of both of those? What sound? K. Did you say k? Very good. Awesome. Next two, use your arm too. Ready? Fall, seal, fall, seal. What do you hear at the end? What sound do you hear? Oh, awesome. Next, laugh, tough, laugh, tough. Ending sounds. Good. Next, from him, your turn. From him. Ending sounds. Mm. You guys are great at this. The next one, last one, ready? Class, miss. Say it with me. Class, miss. What's the last sound you heard in that one? S awesome job. So you just matched ending sounds. You're so smart. Awesome, awesome. So proud of you. The next thing we're going to do is one of my favorites. It's where I say the sentence, and then you say the sentence, and then we clap the, the words in the sentence and try to remember how many words. It's a lot of steps. Sounds like a lot of steps, but you guys know how to do this. Easy peasy. You're so good at it. All right. And remember I told you about how repeating sentences, it's so good because how many times when we're in kindergarten, we think adults talk really fast. Miss Kavanaugh is one of them sometimes. And when we're little, when we're younger and we're learning our language and we're learning how to read, we hear things differently than what the grownups are saying sometimes, right? They can sound confusing. People have different accents. They talk really fast or really slow. They blend some things together that shouldn't be. So I always give you the example as a grown-up may say, go get your backpack. And a lot of you hear the word pack pack instead of backpack. Sounds very similar. My mouth looks the same when I say it, but the sound is very, very different. A little, or a little, little, just a little different. Backpack, pack, pack. Confusing, right? They're close. They're a lot alike. So that's why it's important that we do these sentences and we say them back. And it helps, helps us to make sure we're hearing the words and the sounds correctly, right? Even though I think I love when you guys say some silly things like pack, pack instead of backpack. It's very cute. All right, are we ready to try these sentences? Awesome. <clears throat> All right, the first one is, if I can read, oh, there we go. The girls can kick far. Your turn. The girls can kick far. Let's clap it. The girls can kick far. How many words? Five. Good. All right. Georgia is a good dog. Georgia is a good dog. Georgia is a good dog. How many claps? Did you say five? Good. I said I could come too. I said I could come too. Let's clap it. I said I could come too. Ooh, did you get those claps? That was six. My family was loud. Let's clap it. My family was loud. How many claps? That was four. Good. Last one. 
Please turn out the lights. Let's clap it. Please turn out the lights. Did you count it? You could always say it back in your head like this. What did we get? Did you say five? Good. You've got it. Awesome job. Awesome, awesome job. So I chose a, a word pattern to review for today for our word pattern. So you're going to either need like your dry erase board or your green notebook, um, a piece of paper and um, something to write with. And I chose a word pattern that we've already done um, that I just want us to practice with. So let me find up oh, here it is lots of stuff all right ready do you remember this word pattern do you what is it say it did you say r yes r r as in car see the car and see we have a blank and then the letters a r can you say that with me a r r do you remember from our nursery rhyme, possibly a word that had R in it. What if I told you the title of it? Starlight, star bright. Did you find an R word? You're gonna say star? Yes, star. All right, so we have car and star. So I set up my notebook already and you can set your notebook up, but do you see I did a line, A R, a line, A R, okay? It's important you write it down, but the the most important part is that you build a word after you write it down. So you have to add a sound or a blend in here to build your word, right? A sound or a blend to build your word. So R, we already know that's R as in car. So what sound would we, we add to the beginning here to build the word car, K -k car? It could either be the K or the C because they both say K. But car is built with is spelt with a C. So I am going to get my marker and I'm going to build car. Now you told me that the word from our nursery rhyme was star. Hmm. Star. I hear two sounds. Do you hear two? We could add two sounds before the R to build a word. Hmm, let's stretch it out. St do you hear it? What's the first? S All right, and there's another one. S t t what is it? T. So now let's read our word. Star. Star. So we have car. Star. Always reread your words that you build. So I want you to build at least three more words on your own when we're done with our video today. At least three. If you make more than three, oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to see your R words. All right, awesome. I want to review, since it's Monday, it's the beginning of the week, and we didn't do, do schoolwork this weekend, I want to review our sounds. <coughs> I want to review our consonant sounds and our long and short vowel sounds. But we're going to do this quick like bunnies, okay? This is a quick, quick, quick. We're just going to say the sound of the letter, okay? The sound is p, good. The sound is y. The sound is b. The sound is l. The sound is x. The sound is 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 z. The sound is d. The sound is w. The sound is m. The sound is t. The sound is j. The sound is f. The sound is r. Yeah, good job. Teeth together. The sound is g. This also can make another sound. Do you know the other sound of g? G says g and it also says j, like the j, giraffe. Two sounds, kind of like our vowels, right? The sound is k. 
This one makes two sounds too. Do you remember the other sound? The, the picture clue is a circle. So it makes us sound like an S in some words too. So it says K and S. How about this one? The sound is K. The sound is N. Good job. Quick review. Did you notice my vowels weren't in there? And my vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. A, E, I, O, and U. Okay, so I want to review the short sound of our vowels and the long sound. So remember, the long sound is when they say their names. The vowel says its name. So for example, the letter is O. His long sound is O, like ocean. What's the short sound of O? Ah. So we have O and ah. We have a and a, a and a. Long sound of I is I, like ice cream. And the short sound is I. Good. The long sound is E, like easel. And the short sound is E, like A. Good. The long sound of is U, like unicorn. Right? He says his name, unicorn. And the short sound is uh, like umbrella. Good job. And then we've been doing some digraphs where the two letters are stuck together to make one new sound. Let's see if you remember them. The sound of this digraph is sh, like shark, ch, like cheese, like thumb. Good job. Proud of you. Awesome. And I want to show you another digraph. We haven't worked on a lot yet. This one. WH. It says what? Just says what? Mm -hmm. Like what? All right. Awesome. Awesome job reviewing. Good job reviewing all of your sounds. Got to keep those brains sharp. Okay. Moving and cruising along. <coughs> so I want to rem us to remember some of our math tools that we use. Who remembers what this is called? What is this? Did you say a tens frame? You're so smart. It's a tens frame. And why is this thing called a tens frame? Because it has 10 spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10 spots. And it helps us organize our math. It does. It helps us because if we look at this tens frame and there's some dots on there, it's much easier to figure out how many if we just had some scattered all around, some scattered dots. So this is a tool to help us organize our thinking. We've been using these double tens frames to show teen numbers. So when one of these is full, when a tens frame is full, how many is it? When it's full, there's a dot in every one. Looks like this. How many is this? It's 10. Yeah, a 10. Okay, so a 10 is a full tens frame. A teen is a tens full tens frame and some more ones. So teens, uh, it's a, it helps us when we're figuring out teen numbers to understand that it's a full tens frame and then some more ones on another tens frame. So a full 10 and some more ones. What's this number? It's just 10, right? Because we have 10 and zero is 10. Good. All right, so let's practice. A full tens frame, 10 and three. What's the number? Good, 13. 10 and, how many is that? 10 and seven, good. 10 and seven, how many? 17, good job. 10 and one. What's the teen? 11, good. 10 and, how many? 10 and six, what's the teen? 16, good job. 10 and two, 10 and two, what's the teen? 12, wow, you guys are getting good. 10 and, whoa, what's this one? 10 and eight, what's the teen? 18, good job. 10 and five, what's the teen? 15, awesome. 10 and, whoa, what's this one? 
Did you say nine? Good. What's 10 and nine? What's the teen? 19. 10 and four. What's the teen? 14. Excellent. So let's do the exact same thing with number cards. Are you ready? Let's do this really quick. Put them right here. You ready? 10 and eight. 18, good. 10 and seven ones, what's the number? 17, good. 10 and six ones, what's the teen? 16. 10 and one. 11, great. 10 and three. 13, awesome. 10 and four. Do you say 14, smarty pants? 10 and nine. 19, couple more, 10 and two. 12, good. Last one, 10 and five. 15. Oh, your math brains are amazing. Check you out. I'm so proud. My heart is so proud. You're working so hard. Now, the other thing I want to do during this time <clears throat> is I want us, if you have your number line that you made from last week, I saw some of your pictures of your number lines. They looked awesome. Um, I really like Jack made this awesome one with like color, colored dots or little squares above each number. So here's my number line that I made out of some garbage out of my recycling bin. <clears throat> I only did one through 16 because that's all that I fit, but that's okay. <clears throat> I wanted to use the number line today to find a number and count down. When we count down, the numbers get smaller or less. So <clears throat> I need something to point with. I'll use this. All right. So ready? F let's find number 13. There it is, 13. Now we're gonna count down, counting down, ready? Let's count down from 13 all the way to one, ready? 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good job. That's counting down. So say count down, number gets smaller. Because look, when we count down, we're going this way. And look at the numbers. Lower, 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 all the way to one. Counting down, the numbers always get smaller. Okay? So let's take a look at number nine. If we counted down, we would hop this way, right? To what number? Eight, right? So eight is one less than nine. So if we hopped back one hop from nine, bloop, we would land on eight. That's one less. Can you find number 12? Go ahead and find number 12. It's right here. Which is one less than 12? Would it be 11 or 13? What's one less than 12? One less than 12. Yes, we would hop back to the smaller number. It's 11, one less. So that's a game that you can play on your number line. There's lots of games you can play, but you could do one less. So someone calls out a number and you have to find it and then hop back to one less, okay, on your number line. I want to look at our problem solving from last week. Um, last week's problem solving is right here in front of me. Do you remember this? Did you guys solve this problem? There are 10 bluebirds in my bird bath. Four bluebirds fly away. How many bluebirds are in the bird bath now? How many of you drew a picture to solve this one? I was thinking I would do a picture too. So we knew that we had how many bluebirds? Did you say 10? Yeah, there were 10 bluebirds. So I am going to get my blue marker, which is somewhere in here. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna use purple because I can't find my blue marker. I'm gonna draw 10 bluebirds. I'm just gonna make them circles. 10, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, after I draw my picture, what do I always tell you to do? 
Count and check. You want to make sure you drew the right number, right? Let's count and check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thumbs up? All right. So now I have my ten bluebirds. And what happened? Did we get more bluebirds or did some leave? Yeah, some flew away. Do you remember how many flew away? Yeah, four bluebirds flew away. So how can I show the, the story problem? How can I show that they flew away? What's a trick that I've taught you? Yeah, you can cross them out. So I'm gonna cross out four bluebirds. One, two, three, four. Now we need to know how many bluebirds are still in my bird bath. And then we would count the ones that we didn't cross out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good, now's the tricky part. So we know that there's six bluebirds. How would you write the equation? So we say, what did you start with? We started with 10 bluebirds. And then some flew away, which is addition or subtraction? Subtraction. So 10 minus how many flew away? Four equals how many bluebirds are still in the bird bath? And you told me six. And you can write birds if you'd like to, or bluebirds. I see a lot of you have been labeling. I love it. I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Now, I have a new story problem for today. Today's story problem is actually, where is it? Here it is. Nope, that's not it. I don't know where I put it. Oh, there it is. Found it. Today's story problem is about JJ. So I told you JJ likes to make a garden, make gardens. So today's story problem is JJ planted 10 seeds in his garden. Six are tomato seeds and the rest are basil. How many of, of those seeds are basil? So we know he planted 10 seeds and six are tomato. The rest are basil. You have to figure out how many are basil. I can't wait to see your pictures and your equations on how to solve this problem of the day. I can't wait to see it. So we've done a lot so far this morning. How's everybody feeling? They need to move in grooving to stand up and shake a little bit, shake it out a little bit. You've been doing a lot of learning for a while now. I'm really proud of you. So I want to make sure that all of my class that you have followed the directions to get on brain pop. I gave you guys some really cool space assignments, things to learn about space on Brain Pop Junior. And I want you to check out the information on space tomorrow um, because I want to start doing our next Magic Treehouse read aloud, our Midnight on the Moon. Okay, so you, you need to find out some of that background information about space so that when you listen to Jack and Annie's adventure, you understand what's happening. Okay. So you need to check out Brain Pop. Our schedule's a little bit different. I sent your schedule to all your parents and it's on our website. Um, we're just gonna do these live videos three days a week, right? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Tuesday and Thursday, you're gonna do a lot of your other things like reading your right your level books that I assigned to you on RAS, doing your Brain Pop, listening to the read alouds. And there's also um, additional optional lessons that are being posted on our district ELA and math site that I added um, the link on the schedule and the link is also on our website. All the information is there. So um, I thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I thank you for all the great feedback that the parents have given me about, you know, the workload and how and making it work. Um, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any concerns or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am here to help you parents. Um, and I will schedule a Zoom meeting for later this week. So our little friends, we can all see each other. I miss you dearly. Please don't forget to be a home helper today, okay? Use those kind words with manners. Help around the house as much as you can. All right. We've been working so hard at that. I hope you have a magical, magnificent Monday, even though it's raining outside. All right. And I will see you guys Wednesday morning. Bye.